A White House press briefing featuring the cast of the show Ted Lasso broke into chaos yesterday as correspondent for Today News Africa Simon Ateba repeatedly interjected. Let's watch. That's not, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. From across the room. You've been discriminating against me and discriminating against some people in the briefing room. And I'm saying that this is the U.S., this is not China, this is not Russia. This is not Russia. Okay. What you are doing, you are making a mockery of the first amendment. It's been seven months. You've not called on me. You've not called my messages. I'm saying that that's not right. That's not right. Fun times. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the press briefing room. Okay. This is not right. Sir, let it go. Are we ready? Are we going to behave? Tava later again claimed that he was being discriminated against in the briefing room. The press corps is tired of dealing with this. It is not about that, you, Simon. I understand that you get questioned all the time and you don't the understand what it is to sit here for eight months and being discriminated hey, against. I understand that you're in the front row and you feel comfortable and you get questioned all the time. But there are time. people in the back who don't get any questions. Don't make assumptions about what the rest of us do. Mind your manners when you're in here. If you have a problem, you bring it up afterwards. But you are impinging on everybody in here who's only trying to do their job. Okay, Sorry. thank you. I'm saying that you shouldn't discriminate against some people because you don't agree with their question, you're offended by your you question. Made your point. Now, back in November, Ateba received a warning letter uh, back in from WHCA President Tamar Keith after an incident during which he insisted on asking Dr. Fauci a question about the NIH's research in Wuhan, China. Reporter Emily Kopp wrote, what's the point of the White House Correspondents Association? Is it just throwing bad parties? This is interesting, because if it is empirically true that it's been seven or eight months during which he has not been called on, he has a history of calling, of asking questions that are adversarial to mm -hmm. the current administration, so they clearly have incentive not to call on him, and in fact, other reporters who are not asking as adversarial questions um, are being called on with more frequency, then it seems like he deserves a response other than being dismissed by other members of the briefing room as needing to mind his manners or whatever he was told. It is absolutely the case that they're more likely to call on friendlier reporters. Um, they are probably less likely to call on, it's a Democratic administration, they're going to be less likely to call on uh, conservative uh, people. They, they call on less frequently outlets that are not as big or, yeah. or I mean, important. It does seem there. like Ducey gets a lot of bites at the apple, and he's obviously adversarial. Right, because right. Fox is big. Um, yeah, look, obviously there there have to be some procedures so that the whole room just doesn't evolve and devolve into shouting. Like they have a kind of tradition that mm -hmm. you're allowed to shout to get your question, but then once somebody's called on, everybody else shuts up so that we can all hear what that person says. That's the only way you can do it so that it really works or else it'll just be incoherent right. shouting the whole time. So I, I, I get the frustrated other journalists that look, this is the way things are done so that any of us can ask questions. So he, I see why they were frustrated with him speaking out of turn. I, that said, I never, I'm never going to get hostile. I'm never going to get upset that a that a that a hostile reporter asked a hostile question mm -hmm. because that's what we're there, we're here to do. That's what it's supposed to be. The Ted La what the stunned dumb stunt was. That? I don't watch the show. Maybe you can <laughs> familiarize me with I've only what, watched about half what the season. importance, the relevance of Jason Sudeikis is to. What's going on in the world? This was a this was supposed to be a feel good stunt. I hate these things. I well, hate uh, things like uh, this. Apparently, the cast of Ted Lasso, a popular Ugh. Apple TV show, uh, is was uh, the point was they were there to talk about mental health and do mental health awareness. I, I, Why? I, which is you know, administrations do this kind of thing. It's it is what it is. Um, but I, I can imagine that Ateba's frustration might be exacerbated by the idea that precious time is being spent on things yes. that are not so precious or important. Moreover, I take your point about not wanting it to devolve into chaos and reporters yelling over each other and there being a kind of like respectful code. But I also remember moments during the Trump administration where April Ryan felt, uh, you know, White House reporter felt that she mm -hmm. was being dismissed, perhaps even um, patronized to or talked down to and perhaps even discriminated against on the basis of her race. 
by Trump uh, uh, press secretaries, and there being other other reporters in the room that would re-ask her question and kind of do an I am Spartacus to double down and support her and offer solidarity in the room. And it doesn't seem to me that a table, for whatever reason, has ever had many allies in the room at all. And I don't know if that if it's because his personal attitude in the room, whether it's because of his politics in the room, um, because he genuinely is acting out of step with the rules of decorum, or whether it's because he's, the reporters in the room substantively disagree with what he has to say. I, I, I can't really speak to that. But it does. it is interesting to me that at no point does there seem to be have been any kind of um, uh, solidarity even expressed by more, let's say, conservative right-leaning outlets in the room. Right. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't— <laughs> I don't want to hear at the White House press briefing. I don't want to. I don't care about Jason Stakis. I don't want to hear his mental health opinions. I want to know from from uh, from the press secretary when we're going to be able to read the Energy Department, uh, the, the report that caused the Energy Department to conclude it was more likely there was a lab leak. I want to read that information. Biden has, is supposedly going to declassify some of this type of information. I'm worried that he's not going to actually declass, declassify enough for you to make any rational conclusion on your own. That's that's the question I want answered. I want to. You, you probably have a thousand other questions you'd like to ask as well. Like, let's not waste people's time on stupid Hollywood, like SNL type skits, right? Is Joe Biden going to go to East Palestine? Yeah, that was. <laughs> I was going to guess that was going to be your question. <laughs> I almost, I almost just put that question in your, in your, <laughs> in your mouth. Um, well, Associated Press uh, reporter Zeke Miller apologized to Karine Jean Pierre over Ateb's behavior yesterday. Let's take a listen. I just want to express. Uh, our apologies to the press corps, to the folks watching at home for the display we saw earlier. Our responsibility is to them. We're here to ask questions on their behalf to hold their government accountable because they can't all be here. Um, they, this, is, it, this isn't about us. Again, I don't. I don't think this is. I think this is kind of a bad look to be like. We're so sorry that you felt a little uncomfortable or or, or heckled or made like you were going to get a hostile question. Like, what is what is your job if not to do that? I, again, I know that there's a proper way to do it, and I agree that the correct procedure for asking questions should be followed because it's just not going. It's just going to devolve if you don't do that. But I, I, I'm not going to get like super angry or think the the integrity of the building has been besmirched by someone asking a question at the wrong time. Come on. Yeah, I, I, it makes me have some questions about how adversarial the press really is when they're if their instinct is so much right. to cover the press secretary. This is the White House Correspondents and, Association. They want to make sure she's still going to attend the party at the end of the year. I mean, that, that, that is the question. And here's here's my hot take on all of this. The, the concern with decorum here is giving me the slap Oscars 2022 vibes. Mm -hmm. the, the, the underlying conflict, whether or not you think that he actually should speak out of turn or should do that, yeah, like I think that everyone agrees that I in an ideal pro slap. <laughs> and I, No, but in an ideal world, obviously people don't hit people in any mm -hmm. context. In an ideal world, you don't have to interrupt and jockey and, and do things like that. But there is a preciousness about the institutionality that causes me some concern, particularly because institutions like the Oscars, elite institutions like the press for the press briefing room, so that so many people don't don't have access to are often used to frame public opinion, to exclude certain questions from being asked. The, the procedures are there to protect people like Crony Jean-Pierre, not to create transparency for the people the press is supposed to be representing. Yeah. Good points. Well, that does it for us today. Tomorrow on Rising, revolutionary Black Network Savvy Savs will join us and we'll get her take on all the biggest news of the day. Be well, sure actually, and we'll get her take on our new set. Which we're yeah, so that's the most about. important thing, most Robbie. Important <laughs> right. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>